In 1725, in Shuya, Russia, a quaint village a little less than 200 miles northeast of Moscow, Russian peasant Fedor Vasilyev and his wife, name unknown, welcomed their first set of twins into the world. Little did they know that over the next 40 years, Mrs. Vasilyeva would have a total of 27 successful pregnancies, leading to a whopping 69 children comprising of 16 pairs of twins, 7 sets of triplets, and 4 sets of quadruplets. Although Mrs. Vasilyev's name is lost to history, we do know by records preserved at the Nikolsky Monastery, just outside of Moscow, that by 1785, Mr. Vasilyev had already taken a second wife. Whether Fedor simply separated from his first wife or the original Mrs. Vasilyeva passed on remains a mystery. Although she's rumored to have lived to the age of 76, but that claim is yet to be proven. The same monastic records, however, show that Fedor's second wife would go on to have eight successful pregnancies, producing a total of 18 children, six pairs of twins and two sets of triplets. At the ripe old age of 75, Fedor Vasilyev had fathered 87 children, 84 of which were still alive. While the sheer numbers alone would leave anyone with an incredulous gasp, the year and lack of medical knowledge are equally concerning, especially given the number of multiple births both Vasilyeva wives went through. It seems hardly likely that this story is genuinely true. As you can imagine, it's had its fair share of skeptics probing the story, such as Julia Bell, who in 1933 debunked the story's veracity, unpacking the initial claim of this record in F.J. Hermann's 1790 publication, Statistische Schilderung von Rubland, Statistical Description from Russia, which Hermann urged to be taken with some skepticism, with a caution. Bell also uncovered that scientists from the French Academy of Sciences who attempted to verify the claims were met with concerns from the Imperial Academy of St. Petersburg, who informed them that all investigation was superfluous, that members of the family still lived in Moscow, and that they had been the object of favors from the government. We can safely say that Bell too regarded the case as under suspicion. 65 years after her analytical expose, Marie Clay, a clinical psychologist from New Zealand, concluded, This evasion of proper investigation seems, in retrospect, to have dealt a terminal blow to our chances of ever establishing the true detail of this extraordinary case. But what about the scientific possibility of the shocking medical anomaly of having so many pregnancies and births? First off, let's figure out how long Vasilyeva would have been pregnant. Given that women's reproductive cycles are typically from around 15 to 51, and that there's only about a slight 1% chance of having a baby per cycle after the age of 45, both Vasilyeva wives would have had to be very fertile to continue conceiving children for so long. Not only that, but we should keep in mind that fertility decreases with each successive pregnancy, and the body tends not to ovulate while breastfeeding. As if that wasn't enough to totally discredit this story's claims, there's the added consideration of all the multiple births. 16 pairs of twins, 4 sets of quadruplets, and 7 sets of triplets. The risks for fatal serious complications increase with the number of births twins, triplets, quadruplets, etc. And in the Russian countryside of the 1700s, those risks were much higher. Multiple pregnancies like twins, triplets, quadruplets, etc. occur rarely, and the likelihood decreases as the number increases. The odds of a peasant woman of 18th century Russia having, and more importantly, surviving that many multiple pregnancies, are dubious. Supposedly, 67 of the first Vasilyeva's 69 children survived infancy at a time when infant mortality was high for full-term singletons, and dismally more so for higher-order births, who were almost always born preterm and less healthy. However unlikely as this case may seem, it's not completely impossible. There have been several other couples throughout history to have successfully parented that many children. In 1761, the founder of Guinness, Arthur Guinness, married Olivia Whitmore. The couple would go on to have 21 children, but only 10 of them lived into adulthood. And in the first decade of the 1900s, what's now known as the Gravata case. A Tuscan woman by the name of Mrs. Gravata, a twin daughter of a triplet, had 62 children. A set of sextuplets, a set of quintuplets, a set of quadruplets, two sets of triplets, and 40 twins or singlets. Historically, it used to be not all uncommon to have large families, though it is still the norm within certain religions and cultures, so why did having more children prevail? There's a variety of reasons. With little to no birth control methods, people had no option but to have more children. Additionally, producing more children had its benefits, particularly for peasants and farmers. Having more children meant more hands to do the work, but at the same time it meant more mouths to feed, although we can count the return investment in old age when children take care of parents. 
We should also keep in mind that some procreativity has been very much tied to belief systems, such as those that promote polygamous marriages, a practice in itself that's preserved the continued role of larger family units compared to monogamous relationships. There was also the desire to create a legacy with the family. Living through infancy was no easy feat. The more children you had, the greater chances of a son living long enough to inherit your property, carry on your legacy, and ensure your family name lives on. So what's changed? The New York Times reported in 2018 that Americans were having less babies. Through various surveys, they cite economic instability, desire for more flexible free time, more career options for women, among others as reasons less Americans are having children. While there are still instances of women having numerous pregnancies, they're much rarer and often attract media attention. Such as the Octomom, or the Duggars in America of TLC's 19 Kids and Counting, or the Radfords of the UK's Channel 4 documentary 16 Kids and Counting. While we don't see that many cases involving as many children these days, large families are still prominent in a variety of cultures and religions. For example, within the Church of Latter-day Saints, larger families are commonplace, as doctrines don't approve of birth control and instead praise large families and strong family bonds. Similarly, devout Catholics don't believe in the use of birth control methods, and thus tend to have larger families. These families typically have an average of 7 to 10 children, and although not as high as the Vasilyev 67 or 69, a high number still for today's standards. 